I own George's shop in Pinky Gillum's. Uh, the feral pieces were in a box. I don't know if any of you are familiar, some maybe, that uh, there was always between George and, and Pinky, there was a love-hate relationship. And uh, George was a feral maker in 47, I believe it was. Uh, Pinky was running 120 rods for George, so George could do all the metal work. George was a master metal worker. Uh, he worked at Payne for, I want to say, 11 years. It was probably, you know, give or take. And he's responsible for the Payne silver lock and reel seat, for updating the ferrules, and a lot of other metal work there. Uh, when I worked there, we still had die plates. Back in those days, they used to stamp their work. They were proud workmen. And we had individual dies, which I'll show you. I have all of George's die set here with me, along with my new dies. And they also used to draw a plate, which was just a series of holes, you know, polished and hardened tool steel. And uh, the workmen back then always had a habit of leaving their hall. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to line up right there, okay? And you're going to gently move the handle down so you just touch, okay? And then we're going to readjust things. Yeah. <laughs> He's a big one I picked on, isn't he? Yeah. Okay. Okay. How's your alignment look to you? Not very good. It looks like it needs to come back that way. Okay. I can't see on this side. I think that. Okay, stand up there. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move this handle out without dropping it on our foot. Okay. And you're going to move your handle up okay. so you can get a nice smooth stroke. Okay? okay. Right. That's it. Get it where you, where you think. All right, that's good. Okay. That's good. That's okay. good. Now, stand right here. Grab onto your handle okay. and just do a nice smooth. What I usually do is I'll do this, give it a little set in case it's not perfectly lined up. It's really hard to get it lined up perfectly. Then back off so it settles. Now you're all set. That's it. Very good. One shot. How much was that reduced now? Um, we went through 280, 290. Can you start with that? 295 to set it on my mandrel. And we have a 265 roughly. Step downs. Again, same way we've got here 15 ID. So here's another piece of 15 ID. Again, we're working with 264 difference all the time. This is a piece of 13 ID ferrule tubing which has an OD of 15 because it's got a 64th wall, so 264 difference. What's happening here is the ID of this tubing, and I'm working off of brain power, is 227, 0.227. The OD of this is 0.233. So there's six thousandths difference in thickness here. What we're going to do is we're going to solder this in here, and then we're going to machine the six thousandths off of here to make it fit in here. Or Leave it a little fat so the and actually, I'll leave it two so thousands back that up two here. thousands bigger so that I can take that off of the file. Here, so all I'm doing is I'm coming back. I put some. I'll put some pretty on this one too, just so you guys can see what a what a pretty feral since we're about done here.
more deals than parted off will actually have a Roll this around where I can watch it and try to make sure that's good and tight to my reel seat and start running it around this rod. That's the most important place to get it tight is right at the beginning where you're getting on the reel seat. Now I'll hold it back out here and I do it just like wrapping a rod. You know how you kind of want a little bit of an angle and you want the thread to hit the thread to wrap that you just put on? I'll do the same thing. A little bit of overlap on this does an other thing. It's a whole lot easier to hide an overlap than it is to hide a gap. And I'll just take, I've got the wrong hand going here, but, and just wrap this around. <laughs> this is a whole lot easier to do on a lathe than it is on a mandrel in your lap. I agree with you, <laughs> You're putting a lot of pressure on that? Pretty good bit. I like it on tight. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about, you know, you have to have some clamp pressure on glue for about four hours to make it dry well. And I'm pulling on this a little harder than I'd pull my shoelaces on my wading boots.